least five minutes. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and my apologies for uh, being late. I did want to um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Ross, for this hearing. As uh, we all know, uh, fusion has been a major focus of this committee and, and myself for some time. And uh, the National Ignition Facility at Lawrence, uh, it's still the only machine in the world that's actually achieved fusion ignition, has now achieved it nine times uh, with a big new record uh, output of 8.6 megajoules just in, in April. So uh, I agree that the milestone-based uh, public-private partnership is, is excellent. It's made a big difference. Um, DOE uh, finalized agreements with the uh, first eight uh, awardees just last year. Um, We've seen, as you've mentioned, an infusion of private sector investment in uh, fusion, 3.5 billion in the last uh, 15 months alone, most of that going to companies located in the United States. But as you point out, China is ahead of us, and I, um, I am very concerned that we are not making the investments necessary to be the winners in this. I am very much opposed to President Trump's budget overall, uh, but I would like to say uh, that when it comes to a specific request for fusion, it's moving in the right direction, uh, and I am I, glad for that. Uh, we introduced uh, Chairman Olbernolte, uh, Mr. Byers, who, who's here today, Ms. Trahan and myself, an amendment uh, to the Rules uh, Committee um, to basically support the president's um, uh, budget. Unfortunately, for reasons I do not understand, that amendment that supported the president was not made in order. Um, but I'm hoping that we will continue to work on a bipartisan basis to get to where we need uh, to go. And I would like to mention that Chairman Olbernolte uh, joined me last month in introducing uh, a bipartisan STEM education and skilled technical workforce for Fusion Act because we need to get, you know, like like Wayne Gretzky said, you need to to, to skate to where the hockey, uh, hockey puck is going to be. So I will just uh, close uh, with this, um, if I may just turn to questions, Mr. Chairman, uh, Dr. Uh, Mumgard, you talked about the need for a ten billion dollar investment in fusion research and the demonstration effort. And I think um, that case has been made for some time. Uh, we've just never fulfilled it. Actually, we had the roadmap, and China took the roadmap and actually funded it. So that would be helpful, and you've outlined how it would be used. But we're not going to catch up through the annual budget process alone. If we're able to do this $10 billion one-time investment, what is next? to get us to where we need to be. I mean, maybe Dr. Carter and others have a views on that as well. Yeah, so I think the idea of a, a kick, like a, a, a single program that can set the change in the trajectory, and that isn't just about the change in trajectory of like annual budgets. It's actually about the change in trajectory of the mandate. And if we have a goal to have a fusion power plant be built in the United States, and we have a program that is sufficiently scaled to help propel that, not the whole cost, the cost share of it, what that will naturally do is mean that the programs that are already running, that are sort of going off and they're doing good work, but it's not directed, are naturally going to align to it. And we see that in other programs in, in, in other areas of science and technology at the transition to commercialization. So I don't think it's a $10 billion one-time program, and then suddenly we need to be at $5 billion a year of appropriations. We actually have a good pot of money, but we do need to see that shift and, and the level of commitment that's, that's consistent with the ambition and commitment done in the private sector, frankly, and in other countries. Yeah. Dr. Carter, you look eager to... <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, I, I agree. This, and this $10 billion injection would, would go a long way to setting us on the course, as Bob says, Dr. Mumgard, sorry. Um, in terms of getting facilities together, public-private partnerships, we'll need alongside of that the R&D programs to exploit these. Uh, those should be PPP. We should, we should be working together on trying to de-risk and, and develop the technology. We'll need foundational programs. We need to continue to innovate. Right. We'll, we'll need workforce. We'll need to set up supply chains. Um, there's all kinds of things that need to be done as part of that investment. 
I, I'd just like to say that the reduction in grant funding in research generally has not been helpful in advancing uh, our quest to be number one and to achieve uh, fusion as an energy source, and we need to address that as well. With that, um, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member, thank you for letting me pop ahead of others, um, and I yield back. Then let the yields back.